the whole idea as to vis-a-vis -vis is is Wooly Lynch is the Wooly Lynch letter is the Wooly Lynch letter valid? I thought this was a good question that you Mimi Hotspot said um mention mention a couple of things but let's just deal with the second thing about the video is so needed give thanks is there any way though to establish the validity of this letter of the Wooly Lynch letter have been trying to do so for years now I know some people who got into an argument because a couple of sisters said that their professor said that the letter was created well after the time of slavery and that it was created to stir up deep thought of the aftermath thereof. The argument stopped once they said that their professor nor anyone knows who wrote the letter but for years now I still wonder. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. First of all, let's just ask the question. Is the Wooly Lynch letter valid? And I think we need to put this out there because perhaps there's somebody out there or someone's out there that got a little more information about this. But it's really more the question of whether the Wooly Lynch letter really describes a valid situation. You understand? A valid strategy to destroy or at least to enslave perpetually a people. You understand? To basically create a slave, perpetual slave mentality. This is what our response initially was verify the validity question. A professor? Well, well. You know, I'm not saying every professor is bad or every professor is good or honest or whatever like that, but the professor works for a system of things. You have to understand that when professors have gotten out of line, and many of them in virus, even just with the environmental climate kind of thing, and after the 9 11, a lot of them who were otherwise, you know, well known, upstanding, appreciate, uh, appreciated professors, they lost their jobs if they, they st stood by their convictions, even though they had the evidence, they had the proof. We know about many black professors and and even white but let's just talk about some vile people professors who got fired because they were bringing into the academic uh, environment into the school system and you have to look at what particular school which speaking about because different schools were established by certain secret societies and secret related societies and originally they were you know these universities and colleges were established to perpetuate you understand the land owning rich white male class of folk you understand and then as it had to adapt they therefore they adapted a lot of other things it's one thing that you know the system has shown us is their adaptability you understand but the question is who will verify who who's gonna verify and who will second the verification uh, for example they said that you know years ago that black folks never done anything you know some still hold to that that illogical you know um, that illogical uh, position and yet facts and figures and evidence has come out that has disproven and some of them still stick to like Egypt they, they say Egypt wasn't part of Africa uh, um, this is when, when I grew up you understand that that's that was the popular thing Egypt is not part of Africa there were people who were so-called upstanding professors, so forth and so on, who were saying Egypt is not part of Africa. And gave us the impression that Egypt wasn't in Africa until we looked at the map and we saw Egypt is in Africa until we looked at the wall paintings and the hieroglyphs and the statues and the carvings and everything else. And these people look awfully black. I mean, they don't look like everybody don't, you know, everybody don't look like everybody else, you know what I mean? Everybody has unique features, so forth and so on, but you could tell that the Egyptians, if they wanted to paint themselves white, they, they had the colors to paint themselves white, if they wanted to, blonde hair, blue eyes, and all that, so forth and so on. So I heard the same thing, too, from others, but the fact is, in the reality of the contents of what Willie Lynch actually is speaking of, and the living history you understand when we can actually take this so-called questionable 
letter and documentation and we can get the evidence that there was some sort of pre conceived premeditated this was premeditated it isn't just slavery they tried to teach us that slavery just happened to happen like that you know just happened to you know almost like America and New World Order but now we begin to learn different things that actually you know this New World Order thing goes way back when the Europeans came from America I mean from Europe over here to America they already was talking about a new world a new world order so forth and so on the new world order thing on the dollar is not just because of Bush or because of Obama or because of a new president or something new that happened they, they was talking about this since at least 1776 and before that and we're learning a lot of this now because we're in the information society and information is going to and fro and we're increasing in certain information as well as some of us in some knowledge ability of it but I think Tony Martin a lecturer a black professor lecturer he has a lecture that's on the internet I think it should still be on the Google or one of it should be out there we'll try to get the name and everything if you're interested in as well as a book called the Jewish onslaught and he also verifies from his own research that the Wooly Lynch documentation is true just like the um, European Jewish uh, involvement in the slave trade I mean the facts are there the evidence is there we're not saying every Jewish person no you know what I mean you know like you got poor white trash you know some of the white people didn't even own themselves they were indentured servants they were basically on the same you know social level as as the slaves sort of except they that they had entitlement because of their their so-called color you know or lack thereof you always but look at how it explains the Willie Lynch letter this world system of sin you know this sinful world this world system that we have been born into now this is a good point that we need to address and we need to take head on because I'm not saying the, the particular professor or the sisters were you know negatively intended or whatever like that but it seems like a classic type of diversion you understand to throw down as oh that that's not even real that was just made up you know such and such and you know there's no validity to that so forth and so on because people are beginning to you know put two and two together they're saying that math ain't, is not really important you don't have to add numbers in your head because it's calculators it get you hooked on a calculator you understand and then when you really have figures to deal with they take away the calculator and then you're handicapped you understand you know what we have this evidence now now we can utilize this evidence in an academic way not an emotional way a lot of people deal with Willie Lynch the Willie Lynch letter in a very emotional way and this is one thing that we advise our people and 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 any body really to really take it more academically take it factually just look at the reality of it you understand because staring us right in the face you over when we ask ourselves why black folk gotta be like the way they are so forth and so on part of the responsibility of course is upon us so-called lost sheep of the house of Israel part of you know the major part of it you understand but the iniquity of the Amorites as Genesis chapter 15 mentions the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full the iniquity of these so-called Canaanites you understand which later on in the Bible becomes the merchants this is interesting the Canaanites the leprosy thing you understand the European link Indo-European link yeah some of the Canaanites you can find in history were black of course because white come from black you know the recessive come from the dominant this is just basic science you understand but it's interesting that later on in the Bible that these same Canaanites would be considered you understand that name would be used to describe merchants you understand and then we now look at the modern Eurocentric world coming to America the black folks so forth and so on and put it all together it's it's clear that the Wooly Lynch letter is valid it's as valid as so-called Greek culture you understand is Greek culture valid you know there's more documentation on the Bible than there is on Homer's Iliad there's more documentation on biblical facts than there is on Socrates I'm just pointing that out right there that there's more manuscripts on the Bible than there is on most of Greek ancient manuscripts than on Greek history 
but yet many of us believe that you know all these things that we hear about European history we haven't looked at the facts for ourselves we haven't independently carbon dated it and analyzed it so that's what we ask who is going to do the the verification and 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 who's going to validate it for us a uh, quote professor or somebody like that who's indebted for his tenure and his retirement and his pension and everything to a university that if he now goes outside of the box you understand he's going to be like the pole white trash or whatever like that or like a, a dumb nigga who just lost his, his his retirement fund you understand these people have sold themselves to some degree or another and if they haven't then they need to stand up you understand and speak the truth and then come what may so give thanks and we're going to do a little bit more on this but if any of you all got any facts additional facts and evidence about the validity of the wood lynch letter please share it give thanks the whole